Hi everyone. Uh, nice meeting you. Hopefully you won't fall asleep. It's pretty short, and I, I wouldn't say it's super entertaining, but it's very helpful. It's a real story. Uh, let me jump into it. So, okay. First, I will quickly tell like how we came before compliance. So we were on marketplace for a few years. We had forge apps, cloud apps, data center apps. We are fully remote team. We are not new for secu to security. We followed best practices. We treated OWASP 10 very seriously. We were enrolled in Bach Bounty for all our cloud apps, only cloud apps at that point. And basically, um, for us, it was something existing. We knew about it because customers wrote us every week at least to fill in questionnaires. They asked for reports directly. So we kind of knew the problem, but it, we were afraid of it. So the early this year, uh, a very nice event from Atlassian, was, which is called Up Week in Berlin. It was another presentation from another marketplace partner. They shared their journey in another lightning talk. And one of the points I took away was it was complex. It took them more than nine months. And I was like, hell no. It's uh, expensive, unpredictable, complicated. Even so, the pain is there, but it was not so big enough. So I kind of decided not to move on anything there. Later the same year in April, I flew to Las Vegas team event from Atlassian, and there was similar conversations, similar presentations like we saw today from Colin, that customers do care about compliance, it's top there. And another reason attract, which attracted me as well was like not only help our customers to ensure trust that we handle their data properly, but also improve our internal processes. So I, I became more curious how we do it, and by incident, the same day, the same time, uh, Vanta presented the automated compliance platform because at the end, I did want for our team to have a magic solution because compliance, again, it sounded complex, unknown to me, like a black box. So I wanted that someone guide me through, take me from point A to point B, and show us how to do it, what is required, and so on. So after that presentation, I was like, okay, it sounds like Vanta could be one of potential magic bullets. I didn't want to do anything. I just, okay, let's see what they have. And it did seem they provide a platform which would connect first all our tools, infrastructure, uh, GitHub, and, and many things so to help us first see where we are. But another interesting point, they also showed us all requirements which were collected in one place. So we knew, okay, we have these things to fulfill and how we can do them as well. I also saw this as an opportunity to uh, make our team more secure internally because yes, we did do follow best practices, we had different scans, but at the same time, um, we paid for bug bounty issues <laughs> time to time, so it, it, the problem was there and persistent, so I wanted that everyone cared about security. So I, I thought as an opportunity to uh, not only become compliant, but also improve our team security posture. As usually for me, I prefer that there is no plan B, so we decided that let's burn all ships and go all, all in. So first of May, we jump in and uh, basically pay for all end-to-end -end stuff. For auditors, for compliance, they have us this nice slide and said, okay, guys, normally uh, many companies try to follow it, but it's all in only our recommendation. You take 30 to 45 days for preparation, which only preparation was still a black box because, I mean, it sounds pretty doable, but then when we actually generated all stuff we need by creating a project central ticket in Jira and so on, it appears more than 50 tasks. So we needed to first create policies, then ensure that we do follow them. Not only we promise people that we do stuff, but we actually follow them because auditors will ask for evidence. Then we needed to change our onboarding, offboarding process, ensure all our employees are trained. So there are like huge list of things which and seemed undoable completely because I was like, how we can do it in 30 days with our team less than 10 people? So what we did, we put a SWOT team because again, it was, that was a priority number one after, of course, running all our production systems. So we put Michael to be responsible for engineering part of things. Maria, she's our QA lead. She was responsible for actually testing not only code, but also testing policies, procedures, ensuring that everything is truthful and we behave as we promised. And I was organizing everything as well as uh, following with uh, all the team and so on. Of course, uh, as probably many of us, we used Atlassian tools to help us. First, we created a compliance space which contained all policies, 
tabletop exercises, incident reviews, uh, our trainings, many, many things. So if anything related to compliance, you just go to one space and it's all there, pretty straightforward. We also put owners, who is responsible for what, in case people from team has uh, had questions, they could ask. Another approach which we started using uh, with compliance, we created a project central ticket. It's basically the one ticket corresponds to a project and linked all development tasks. So there were more than 40 development tasks related to this project and uh, it helped us also be transparent because by uh, scheduling like weekly updates, updating this ticket, so all team knew what has left and what, what is coming. So it also, we had a due date and it kept us uh, promise, kept us each other responsible as well. So now let me pass Mike to, uh, Michael, he will tell you more about our engineering part. Thanks, yeah. So on the engineering part, the most important technical requirements we had uh, were basically automating customer data deletion, uh, fixing security vulnerabilities, and also kind of upgrading our infrastructure so that we could achieve around 100% processing integrity. Uh, we had to kind of develop and implement processes for fixing security and uh, performance uh, and production issues. We also had kind of had to review our infrastructure on all levels of the stack. So the idea was basically to make sure that we tick all the boxes for security, availability, uh, privacy and confidentiality. So uh, in order to do that, we actually decided to speed up a few internal projects, which we already had in our pipeline. And that helped us not only in the compliance certification process, but also in our day-to-day uh, -day lives as uh, engineers. So one of the main things that uh, we did, which we didn't have before, was implement an observability tool. So we decided to implement Sentry in our code base, in our, our apps. And we connected it to GitHub, to our GitHub account, so that we can easily you know, identify where an issue lies. Uh, we connected it to Jira, so that we can uh, raise tickets and track the progress of what's going on. And we also connected it to our messaging app, Microsoft Teams, so that we know as soon as there, like, like, an issue appears. So what it helped us uh, do is actually speed up the process uh, quite a lot. So from you know, identifying issues, to prioritizing, to fixing, and to going to production. So before Sentry, we would actually spend a lot of time in trying to uh, find uh, issues, trying to reproduce them in local environments and, you know, back and forth communication. And after Sentry, we've noticed that we've been able to deliver uh, fixes in production even like within an hour of uh, Sentry reporting them to us. The second thing that we did was uh, actually we didn't have a centralized logging dashboard. We were using CloudWatch, but we, were, we weren't using it in a very smart way. So we started using CloudWatch Insights uh, extensively, mainly because we are fully AWS based and we did a lot of predefined queries. So for each user journey, for each process, for each kind of thing that happens, we predefined queries and now with a clickable button, each of us can go and see what's going on. So it's very easy to identify uh, where an issue occurs. We also introduced a lot of uh, alerts, so pretty much for all the components in our systems, be databases, uh, SQS queues, SNS, Lambda, S3 buckets, pretty much any type of resource we use. We introduced uh, CloudWatch alerts for you know monitoring the performance, the availability, and again, this is connected to our Microsoft Teams so that we understand within like a minute of if something is about to occur or if something has occurred. Internally, we also didn't have any system to manage um, uh, the process where you know may people want to request uh, access or security credentials. Maybe we want to request new software, new hardware. So we didn't have any process in place for that. We didn't have any system. And we were already using Jira Service Desk uh, with our clients anyway as a support help desk. So we decided to implement Jira Service Desk internally as well. And that actually helped us uh, manage that process uh, quite, uh, quite a lot. Uh, the next thing that we did, uh, it's basically we paid a lot of attention to security and integrity. So this was one major part of the compliance and certification process. So that meant basically going through our infrastructure, you know, kind of updating our documentation, updating our architecture diagrams, pretty much anything that explains how our infrastructure works. And we also kind of had to analyze uh, each piece, each component of our infrastructure. So we, we paid attention to the entry and exit points of our applications, how those applications communicate between each other, um, authorization, authentication, 2FA, data storage encryption, security uh, rotation, uh, credentials rotations, pretty much anything on the security side. And in terms of integrity, we actually had to review all the processes, everything that's happening, and we had to, we, we noticed a few issues, so we had to kind of improve on those. So a bit like uh, plugging in, let's say, on SQS queue at a certain place, or maybe doing some code refactoring, or uh, maybe some 
database uh, index changes or updates and so on. So what uh, that helped us again, it's not only in the compliance certification process, but it also helped us a lot uh, to actually be able to scale, to handle, you know, bigger amounts of data and actually to have an easier life uh, as engineers. Uh, something which we didn't have before we started this process was also customer data deletion. So previously, let's say if a customer uninstalls our app or they request their data to be deleted, it would be one of our team members who would actually have to go and manually do that, delete that data. So we used the opportunity to implement an automated customer data deletion pipeline. So now if, let's say, our app is uninstalled or, you know, customers request their data to be deleted, so we actually schedule things for deletion. We keep the data for a specific amount of time in case, you know, our customers decide to reinstall to try stuff. But after a specific amount of time, that data deletion pipeline is triggered and it goes through all our systems and makes sure that all the customer data uh, is deleted. Uh, so uh, now we don't do any human involvement in that process. So that again allows us to focus more on new features and developing the products that we that we have. And after doing all the things I just mentioned, uh, we've always been participating in bug bounty programs, but we pushed on that front as well. So we invited people to test our apps to try to break in. So we got a few security vulnerabilities identified. We were able to fix them quite quickly. Uh, and basically that also confirmed that our systems are quite good in terms of security, also in terms of, you know, processing integrity. So overall with us, as I mentioned, we are fully AWS based and our infrastructure is very much events based. So we have like very, like a lot of small components and each of those components uh, does a very specific job. So for us, it's very easy, let's say, to plug out the component to replace it with something else. So that helped us actually speed up this compliance certification journey quite a lot. So yeah, it was quite a, quite a thing for us, and you can explain what we learned and how you might go forward. Cool, so a few slides left. <laughs> Please keep awake. <laughs> uh, so lessons we want to share, they're pretty simple and straightforward. I mean, without even any compliance, security must be number one priority for you and your team, because, I mean, if your app is down, it is a problem. But if you lose data, this problem could be unreversible. Second point, which I highly recommend for many important things, have no plan B or your plan B could be to succeed with plan A. But otherwise, plan B should not exist. Uh, otherwise, your, yourself or your team will look ways around. Also use compliance as a, an opportunity to improve your internal processes and procedures because uh, it may be scary, but if you see it as more as a benefit than as a must-do task to make your customers happy, it won't be as accepted as nicely. But if you treat it as an overall improvement and learning opportunity, it becomes much easier uh, to sell it to yourself and your team as well. So, and um, when, when you part of this compliance process, there is a cycle which calls audit preparation. Usually, as I mentioned, it's like 30, 45 days, depends on your preparedness. So I highly recommend, or we highly recommend actually to make it number one priority because you will need to potentially do tons of things which you didn't pay attention before. Like one of the biggest things for us was actually manage dependency vulnerability often because we did it like ad hoc or when there was something big, but otherwise we were not staying on top of it day to day. And with compliance, we must do it because it introduces SLAs and if you don't fulfill them, your auditors will know and it will be much harder to do it again. Second uh, or next lesson will be treat this as a project, as a big project, so make a team, uh, keep everyone involved, may have different roles, so people help each other, uh, you have the progress, and of course, last, but probably one of the most important things, be transparent. Share what is left, share updates, like we used uh, and Jira PC tickets to write comments and list things which were missing, which are important, put due dates and so on. We also had weekly calls where we shared and presented everything, so basically all organization knew where we're going through, what is required and what is left. And at the end, of course, we celebrated it with a big milestone. So 23rd of June, we invited our auditors, so they started looking at everything we prepared. And three months later, they sent us a report. So it was more or less four months journey, which is, uh, again, was not easy. So first, around 40 days were like really hard, but at the end, to, um, I think it pays off because now we receive less requests for uh, questionnaires, for SOC reports and so on. So people can go to our trust page and see all our processors, what data we handle and so on. And it's real time, so no one needs to do anything manually. Thank you for your attention and uh, we are happy to answer questions now or later. <laughs>